starting off it's what the fans want um i think we've got too much content at the moment being pushed by disney which doesn't really isn't really what fans are really looking off looking for it's also live action content um, which is something that we are quite in short of at the moment when it comes to tv series um, and it, it really did surpass all of my expectations. And this is what happens when you have passion. And I'm going to think that even some people who did like The Last Jedi will think it's at least as good, if not better, in certain ways, if they're being honest. And people on the fence? Oh, that's another story. We'll have to wait and see what people on the fence say when that comes out a little more. Because I would assume people on the fence are just going to kind of maybe lean towards this. I don't know. It's hard to say. It was an emotional roller coaster. It redeemed the prequels entirely. Thank God. I have spent the last almost 20 hours watching the past six movies, yes. and I can't believe that after that, all that, I was not prepared for it. I have to go back and watch it again, and then again, and then again. Hey, Red! Well, that looks like there's a, pla a hot planet. <gasps> That's what? Oh, sticker on lightsabers, that's cool. Are you, Whoa. are you excited for the movie? Yes. Is everyone gonna love it? Yes. Alright. I want that Jedi. Want that Jedi. Absolutely loved it. It was awesome. It was awesome. It was awesome. I just want to say that in the last 15 minutes, you guys gave us more than the last two movies of Star Wars. Hey man, Solo was good. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. Besides Solo. Now before I begin, let me say that I thoroughly enjoy watching Star Wars Theories videos, and have so for over a year now. I was very excited when this project was announced and expected a great many things from it. I'll be referencing other Star Wars fan films in this video, but out of respect for the creators, I won't be showing any footage beyond that from teasers and trailers. Links to the actual films will be in the description for you all to use to watch and support the creators at their respected sites. In regards to the promotion for Shards of the Past, there was casting for Jedi, and an uproar of support for one wielding an amethyst blade. The reason I won't say his name is to avoid spoiling it for those that can't recall the Jedi who wields it. This led me to believe that more than one episode would have been made by now, but sadly that is not the case. I found this to be disappointing as much of what I was hyped for is yet to come. I understood that more money is of course needed to make every episode and as such I hold no ill thought to this reasoning. That said, while I talk about budget, I want to particularly discuss the look of the film and its CGI. And for the most part, it looks amazing. You can tell where more time and energy was spent, such as establishing shots of Naboo and the capital ship. Sadly, two of these grand shots were used in teasers, so the awe I had for them was spent before watching the episode itself. That said, there are moments where the blaster holes on troopers could have looked better, or other small improvements could have been made if they had more time and a slightly bigger budget or crew. It's evident that the team can get more money. In a video from the premiere itself, one person in the audience shares how they would be happy to pay and support the next episode. Star Wars Theory is not short of support, and don't get me wrong, I also support him. 
although not with money, but with views, liking and commenting on his videos. The man did an amazing job for a YouTube channel. His love for Star Wars is evident, as he has made no money from the making of this film. He paid for every seat in a cinema for people to come and watch the premiere across several different sessions. So don't get me wrong, he is a great guy. But with all the talk about what would happen in later episodes and where the story would go, with even concept art being showcased, I just expected more than one episode to have been complete by now, or at least more to happen in this episode. This is a marketing error on their part. Before I conclude talking about the look of the film, I will share some positives. The opening scene for the most part looked great. There are a few areas which obviously could be improved upon, but those are overshadowed by how great Vader, the clones, officers and the Emperor looked. The Emperor's face is shown a little too often, which took me out of the film, but this is something that I personally found disengaging. The freezing of the blaster bolts was great and epic. Padme's role in this scene was beautiful, but something about the kid Anakin looked a little out of place. I mean no offense to the actor that played him, but something about his costume or hair just seemed off. The Emperor defeating Vader made sense, and the only problem I have is that at one point the Emperor is shown being choked, and then his feet fall still, like people do once they die after choking. But a few seconds later, Vader is still choking him and the Emperor is back to moving around while he's being choked. I believe this is just an error in editing, and one to easily overlook. I also believe that the scene where Vader uses a royal guard to shield him from force lightning is cool in theory, but with how it was executed, it doesn't look so great, especially when compared to other scenes in the film. That said, for the most part, this film is gorgeous, 90% beautiful, and great CGI for a fan film. Moving on, from the opening scene we see Vader outside of his suit, and it looks great. This is one of those small moments where you can obviously see the CGI, but with how everything else looks in the scene, it's easy to ignore the negative. The following scene aboard the capital ship is great, once again showing how strong Palpatine is, just like the opening scene showcases. The one issue here is that the room feels too empty or too small, it just feels fake. Early on when the same room was used, the red light and the action filled the room, but now with the calming blue light and lack of action, or even the dead bodies on the ground, the room feels hollow, like a stage. Following this, Vader heads to Naboo to hunt the Jedi, and everything from here on is great. The look and feel of Naboo is amazing, the troopers look great, and that closing shot? Whoa, is it amazing. Now there are plenty of videos out there by fellow YouTubers, some of whom I subscribe to and watch the videos of, so don't think I'm hating on them, but they praise this film for being a great Star Wars film, better than the ones Disney have made in the past few years. This is a terrible way to compare the films as the moment you compare the quality of these films, you must allow for issues to be raised against the Star Wars fan film that the Disney films have. Yes, the fan film obviously costs less than those made by Disney, but the ones made by Disney must fit an ever-growing and developing universe. They also attempt to broaden the film's audiences. There are many ideas and concepts to consider if you want to compare this episode with a Disney Star Wars film. So you can't simply compare them because they are of the same brand. Both are severely different in many ways that they cannot be compared. You may enjoy one more than the other, but to place them in the same category is the same as comparing apples with oranges. Yes, both are fruit, but they are vastly different. Had this been a Disney film, fans may complain about the story being simple or the amount of references in dialogue to be on the nose, or even the point that Palpatine calls Padme the late queen even though she was last a senator as incorrect. One other issue people have with the Star Wars spin-off movies is a lack of a title crawl, yet this Vader fan film doesn't have one either, and I'm yet to see someone complain about it. That said, I don't necessarily love all of the Star Wars films that Disney have made so far, so don't think I'm biased in that way. Neither do I think that this episode is better than every Disney film produced so far. This is episode 1 of many, and its quality will change based on how it has succeeded. If one was to compare this film with other films, compare it to other Star Wars fan films. This year, a great Star Wars fan film was released called Odyssey, a Star Wars story, and it was made by MAV Films, LLC. Some people may enjoy this more than the Vader film, others may not. This film is gritty, well executed, and emotional. There are moments like any film where some scenes could have looked better, but like the Vader fan film, these moments are few. There are also many other Star Wars fan films the fans should support that were released this year. 
Look at StarWars.com and their 2018 Fan Awards. Yes, some may complain about these films being on the site run by Disney, but will you deny your fellow fans creations because it's on this site? That's not how fans should be. Nonetheless, some of these films are filled with pure enjoyment, are funny or action packed. My personal favourite is Star Wars The Toys Awaken by Raymond M. It captures the purity of Star Wars and the childlike fun we all had as kids. It's also well created and executed. There was a hilarious Lego fan film about a lone clone trooper. I believe it was called No Man Left Behind, but sadly it's not available to view on the site. But the trailer is available on their YouTube channel, JCH Studios. The links for both of these films are in the description down below. Before I finish, I need to talk about the music in the Vader fan film. It is amazing. Its blending of original John Williams scores and his own are so well done. I love the build up at the point where Vader holds Padme. Props to Jacob A. Cadmus, the composer of the film, and J. Scott Rackersey, who provided additional music. Sorry if I mispronounced your names. As I conclude this video, let me reiterate that I do not hate any of the creators or fan films discussed in this video. Although I do not think the first episode of Star Wars series Vader fan film was great, I think it's simply good. I went in expecting more than what I received, but as more episodes are made and released, the quality of this first one will increase. I believe many others out there are currently giving the film too much praise when there are equally good or at times better fan films out there. Nonetheless, they are all Star Wars films, both fan and Disney made. Whether you love it, hate it or are in between, there's something for everyone in this universe.